Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Valancourt. Um, I am an engineering technologist uh, with our PowerMax organization. Uh, today, walking through our cloud mobility uh, demonstration um, and kind of reiterating what um, John Madden had gone through for cloud mobility on WMC PowerMax. Uh, it allows us to kind of offload and for a long term archive um, solution and data retention uh, for your snapshots from a PowerMax. That means that we can seamlessly move uh, that data with an automated and policy based um, snapshot policy. Um, and all that's sort secured um, and efficiently stored with in compression and encryption um, when it's shipped off of that. Um, and we offer it for both the public cloud with uh, Microsoft Azure and AWS, and also with uh, on-prem cloud for uh, EMC ECS and or Dell EMC ECS and Dell EMC PowerScale. Kind of with that, we'll kind of drive through the overall demo. Uh, everything is operated inside of Unisphere for PowerMax. Uh, and when you have the system deployed, we actually have a new pane uh, under system for cloud uh, and a dashboard that goes through the overall system health, how much capacity we're using per store or per cloud provider and any of the data throughput that we see as well. Uh, we start off by creating um, cloud snapshot policies, uh, much like our local snapshot policies, uh, but these ones we specify what cloud provider we're going to use. We're going to give this a quick name. Um, select what cloud provider. Uh, we have an ECS and AWS set in this example. Um, go with ECS. And we can specify the recover point objective. So how frequently we want to take these snapshots, uh, weekly or daily. Um, weekly is a good policy. Um, go through, select the time of day. Um, and what day of the week, and how long we want to store these for. Uh, so you can see here we have the retention or the retention policy of three days all the way out to 14 years. Uh, we also have an until. So if you want to specify an exact calendar date um, of how long you want to keep these for, you can set that in the future as well. And then it'll go through and show you what the compliance um, values are based upon your keep until and kind of use that there. Uh, we can go through and hit create. And it'll create that in the background. Um, as it's going through, we'll see it goes through, create the policy, and it should be all set. Um, next, we'd want to go through and actually protect our storage groups, right? So we're going to add a storage group into that policy. So go through, select in storage group, and go back and click protect. We can do the add snapshot policy to that storage group. And we can see our new demo cloud policy here that we can add it to. Go ahead and hit, click next. And I'm just gonna add that to the list. Um, and then yeah, with the demo edition, it's not there, but we'll go through. Um, so that will add the policy to that storage group, right? Um, so then the next time that policy is run, the storage group will then have its snapshot backed up and then shipped out to the cloud. Um, snapshots are compressed um, and also, um, some encryption is run as well prior to being sent out to the cloud provider. The next thing that we'd want to do is we'd want to be able to actually restore that data, right? So we can ship this out to the cloud for long term. Um, but what if we need to bring it back for doing some tests or analytics or even some fine grain recovery, right? Um, for doing where we want to actually restore it back into uh, the array and go through and select a storage group, go over under data protection and under our cloud snapshots, we can see we have a number here. We can select which one from the date and time that we want to recover. And when we click recover, we can specify the new storage group name, what SRP we want it to go into, and what service level, because we're doing a full recovery of that data um, back to the array. And when we actually hit apply, it'll go through um, and start that recovery process by creating the storage group on the array uh, and kicking off that recover job to pull the data from the cloud provider and restore it back in under new volumes under that storage group. Uh, from there, you can then mount that over to a host um, for use. 
Any questions? Did I see that the, the retention options went from one year to 14 years? Yep. Yeah. So and our no magic goes. number seven years in there <laughs> that seems to be common. Yeah, not right now. Um, it is a one to seven years um, for that. Uh, we can also specify th certain dates. Um, using REST API, we can also get a little more granular as well. Uh, um, okay, thanks. Yep. Uh, so that is a good point. REST API, all of this is supported as well. Um, so any of these calls, any of these procedures, um, we can do uh, kind of on-demand snapshots to ship out to the cloud. So if you know there's certain time intervals where you want to not use a policy, for example, and you want to go ahead and protect one, you can do that as well. Um, kind of keeping track of time. It'd be the same kind of thing as what we do for our local snapshots, uh, or we would go through, hit the protect, um, and use our create a snapshot using SnapVX, because that is the underlying um, technology we use. Um, and we'd select a cloud for our location. Um, and just specify like an on-demand or a specific name for that, right? Um, so that way you can go through and you'll see it under that list um, and select your policy there as well. So next I wanna show you how we can actually do, um, part of our new feature is being able to recover uh, out to um, either on AWS using an EC2 um, vApp or a new release is our vApp um, via our marketplace where we can actually restore data um, using cloud mobility for Dell EMC storage. Uh, from here, we can recover granular recovery of individual files and not have to actually recover the entire data back to the array. Um, so from here, uh, this is a vApp that you'd use the configuration file um, from your PowerMax, the Unisphere dashboard, and that would have all the data information about your number of snapshots, what cloud providers or, or cloud providers are um, configured, uh, and all of the encryption keys and information in order for you to recover. Uh, we'd go through and start the recovery process. We'd see what storage groups are out there that we want to recover from. Um, select an individual uh, date and time that we want to recover, and look at what volumes we want to recover. So we'd go through and select if we want to map an individual volume. So we can do two things. We can map this to an iSCSI initiator um, that is directed to this vApp um, by going through, selecting it, and hit map. Or we can actually do a recovery of data by copying it um, by selecting that volume and click copy. Um, and if you have uh, any of the RDM devices uh, mapped to that vApp, we can then also select what block device as well, and then hit initiate copy. Um, so there's two methods where it can either do a full copy um, to another volume, or as a grain recovery, um, going out to a, a host with a nice SCSI initiator, um, where you can then go through and do fine grain recovery of specific files. You know this Paul or this is available both, as I said, in the um, in the marketplace for VMware marketplace and it's also available in AWS um, as an EC2 um, application. And all of this of course is uh, available um, on Dell EMC PowerMax.